Hi, everyone. <laughs> Sorry, my voice is shot from the Helsinki weather. <laughs> so if I told you to spend the next four years in the middle of pain, hope, and despair, while spending every dime you've ever saved to get a treatment for a non-life-threatening condition, do you think you'd do it? And I want you to raise your hand if you think that you'd try it. Now, the room is not very full, but I want you to look at the two people to your left and the two people to your right, and then yourself, and realize that one of you has probably already tried an infertility treatment, has probably already failed it. <laughs> Now, the thing is that, according to the WHO, 15% of any reproductive age population is infertile. That is 186 million people worldwide. But assisted reproductive technology is not just for infertile people. It's also through growing demands of societal changes for single women and lesbian couples. Now, the problem is that the growing demand for fertility treatment is not met with the corresponding alpha. So then you end up with waiting lists for months, leaving people stranded in doubts before they get to their first practitioner. But the patients are not just growing in um, numbers, they're also growing in complexity and diversity. So the system ends up being overloaded and unprepared for those waves of patients coming in. The thing is that, through no fault of their own, the infertility professionals, the doctors, are doing their very best to provide individualized care every day. But they just can't do it for everyone, every time. So there is a supply constraint everywhere in the world. Today, there is no country that can give their citizens the appropriate uh, offer for fertility treatments. We can do something about it through tech. Basically, we can support the main providers of infertility treatments, and those are clinics and hospitals, to uh, enable them to give the highest quality care at scale We're on a path to individualize, humanize, and digitize the fertility journey to include both women and men who have often been overlooked in the conversation, the process, and the choices relating to their fertility journey. So we equip the infertility care providers for a successful, quicker, cheaper, and more humane treatments at every step from the first doubt to the very last attempt, and that looks different for everyone. We do it at a European level first. We are building the first European-based IVF journey, and that's why we built Louise. Louise is the name of the first IVF baby born in the UK. She's 44 this year. We wished her happy birthday, and she did answer. So IVF is a very new science, and we built a clinical decision support system for infertility professionals. And we believe that in order to decode fertility and the code of life for everyone, we need to have more data points. So that is why we gather a thousand new data points for each patient for the entire journey to shed a light on something that we still know very little about. We do it, first of all, through doctors. Uh, we help them identify risks and opportunities relating to the patients in front of them, whether it is before, during, or after a treatment. On the patient side, we build an individualized and engaging journey that adapts to their understanding, language, and culture. And the clinics, we can support them in identifying new patient pathways in order to increase their ability to produce care at scale. We leave the data exactly where it should be, in the hands of healthcare professionals and their patients, which is why we have been funded by a, for a year by the French research government uh, as a deep tech startup, as we're building a decentralized model that are compliant by default, privacy preserving, and focus on something that we want to make sure to shed a light on, sovereignty for Europe, as for health data. Through all those new data points and tech, uh, we want to help scientists decipher the code of life. But it's not just something for science and patients. Infertility at a European level is a consolidating market with actors rafting dozens of clinics in different countries and trying to streamline their processes. Fertility services is a $45 billion market by 2025. Now, we believe we need to work 
together in order to learn more about infertility. And amazing startups are already making a dent in this ecosystem, but usually focusing on embryo selection. We believe we need to lean towards people now and go, um, go like, well, beyond embryos, I just said it, sorry. <laughs> now, if you think that you have an infertility story that you want to tell us about, or if you want to help us write a new story for life, we're currently closing our pre-seed round, if that sounds interesting to you. You can find me right after this, scan this, or email us. Thank you.